first thing you want to do when you start shading with colored pencil is think about one of the main colors you want to use and think about where your light source is, okay? Think about where your light source is. For this person, they practiced this, their light source is coming in from this direction because this tube, this cylinder is light right here and it gets darker over here. This one gets lighter to darker, this one gets lighter to darker. If I was shading this sphere, I'm going to think about the light source. And if you guys had me last semester, you shaded a million of these. So your light comes in this way. You're barely pressing here and down here at the bottom of the sphere. You guys are pressing with circular motions. Take your time on this, just like you did with the pencil, okay? If, you, if I can't tell where your light source is coming in, then it's going to look flat. Okay, there is one person in first period who had theirs all drawn out. They also had their colored pencil done. I'm here to tell you, it looked a little rough, okay? Because just like with the pencil, colored pencil takes time and it takes little circular motion. So if I am shading a sphere, it's going to be light to dark. If I am shading a rectangular prism, and this is the lightest side, that's the lightest. You can choose another side for the medium. You can choose a third side for the darkest. And how hard you press is going to determine light, medium, dark. Okay? If I had a cylinder connected onto this, then you're going to follow the same format, light to dark, for each section of your object. So each form you run into, if your light source was coming in this way, light, again, take your time. This is obviously a demo light to dark away from the light source. How would the light hit that? We talked a lot about this last semester. If you need a shapes or, or a shading shapes or forms demo, you can look online. You can get very quick ones. How do you shade a cylinder? How do you shade a um, cone? How do you shade a rectangular prism? How do you shade a sphere? But basically I'm showing you right now you move away from that light source. Then you want to pick yourself some colors that are going to enhance this, okay? So some colors that are, not right now, okay? Um, you are going to pick some colors that are going to enhance this. So colors that are close to something on the color wheel are nice mixes to mix in a little bit. So you don't want to press super hard right away with colored pencil because you want to layer this in. Again, if I had you last semester, you have a little bit of an advantage because we did several projects where you were layering those colors of colored pencil. If you really want to get into color theory, which we'll get into it more later, a color that is directly across from a color on a color wheel will darken things. So if I put orange in with blue, that's a good thing. It's going to neutralize this blue and it's going to make it look like there is shadow in here. Okay, if I put purple and yellow together, if I put red and green together, those are colors that are directly across from the color wheel, and it is going to neutralize or make it look like the shadows are a little bit darker without using a heavy black that makes it look like there is a hole in the page. You can use black for the windows, especially if you mix a little blue or purple in with them. Um, because those are a hole in the page. They do go into the ship, okay? So if you're using black, that is a place where you can use it. I would look at your examples on the board um, and look at these examples, fading light to dark, fading light to dark, fading light to dark, away from the light source okay I should be able to tell where your light source is circular motions does this make sense with colored pencil okay if you're ready for colored pencil today awesome great start that is where you should ideally be if you're not I get it I wasn't here yesterday we had a snow day Friday it's been a slow start but we're still working ahead okay